You're watching Insight, a North Shore Schools instructional technology episode. Hi, my name is Nathan Bruno, and we are going to go over cables and connections to get your active board up and running. So we're starting out at the very basics, and to get started with, you need to know about these two connections right here. We have a USB and we have VGA. So remember those two acronyms, USB, VGA. And you can think of it as, as uh, two different things. This is like a mouse. This is like a $1,000 mouse. And this cable connects to your active board. Okay, the VGA connects to your projector. And that's what actually sends the video signal, what you, what you see projected on your screen. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my... VGA to my computer and what happens is the projector recognizes that you have connected does a little handshake and it'll reset your screen resolution to whatever the screen resolution was uh, the last time that you connected to that projector if this is the first time that you've connected to that projector you want to set your screen resolution to 1024 by 768 for both the projector and for your computer screen. Okay, if you don't have these options available here, you're gonna to need to go to Display Preferences. And then, and then select here, 1024 by 768 for the projector and 1024 by 768 for your LCD, your computer screen. Okay, once that's done, your computer will remember that setting for the next time that you connect to that projector and so you'll never have to mess with that setting again. All right, the next, next piece is the USB cable and that is uh, connecting to your board and that is what controls your mouse. That's what allows you to use the stylus with your active board to control your computer. Okay, so I wanna draw your attention right over here on the board you will see this little icon. This represents the active board driver. Okay? This is what communicates between your computer and your active board. If your computer senses that there is no active board connected, you will see a red X here. Okay? That means no active board is connected. Once you plug your active board in, I'm just plugging the USB cable into my computer here. This icon will change to an orange Promethean character. Okay, and that's what lets you know that you have a recognized active board connected to your computer. Okay, first thing I want to do now is to calibrate the board. And the easiest way to do that, if you're tall enough to reach, is to hover the stylus right over this icon here. Now I'm not touching it with the tip of my pen, I'm just hovering right over and you count to 20. One, two, by the time you get to three, it'll go into calibration mode and now we follow the instructions on the board here. Click on surface to begin, okay, press the barrel button to quit. That's this button right here, so don't press that unless you want to quit. And we just click on each of these crosses. Okay, now my board's calibrated. The way I check to make sure that it's actually calibrated correctly is I'll put my, my stylus up here and if, if the cursor lines up with the stylus, it's calibrated correctly. Okay, it's only gonna be as accurate as you are when you click on those uh, crosshairs so you want to make sure that you actually click right in the middle of those crosshairs so that it calibrates accurately. You can always calibrate your board by mousing over to the driver icon here for, uh, for your active board and clicking on the calibrate using your trackpad or your mouse. Okay, now we're in calibration mode. I can do the exact same thing using my stylus.
Okay, so there's two different options for, for calibrating your board. Okay, let's go over some troubleshooting now. So let's say that my stylus is not moving my cursor on the, on the board. Where are some places that I can check to see what might not be working? Well, the first place that my eyes want to go is right up here to see if my computer recognizes that there is a board connected. Okay, and if I see a red X here, that means that my computer doesn't even think there's an active board connected. So, I'm going to look over here for my USB cable and see if that's plugged in. Sometimes, this is plugged into your computer and you still have a red X here. In that situation, all I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in. Nine times out of ten, that will fix the problem. Okay? Give it a little second, and we get the orange Promethean character again. That lets us know that, hey, we're connected and we're good to go. Let's say that you don't even see your computer screen up here on the board. All you get is blue. Okay? That tells me that it's a video signal is probably not connected and that and that is my VGA connection here and so I'm going to make sure that that's snugly fastened on there to the VGA adapter and then I'm going to plug that into my computer and make sure you get the right port when you plug that in. Okay, let me show you one more thing. We have the option to have mirroring turned off or on so right now I'm showing you what it looks like to have mirroring um, turned off. And what we have here is on my screen here, I'm showing something different than what you have on the board up here. Okay, and that's great if I want to um, be showing something to the class on this screen and then have uh, ESIS data or other sensitive content on my screen here. However, if you are not an advanced user, I don't recommend this. And in fact, whenever I'm using the active board, I always want mirroring turned on because I want to have the exact same thing up here that I have on my screen here. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn mirroring on. So to turn uh, mirroring on, click on the display preferences and then choose turn mirroring on. Keeping your Active Inspire software up to date is another way you can avoid glitches and technical issues. For info on how to do this, I invite you to watch the Active Inspire software update video on Insight. If you need further assistance getting your Active Board set up, contact your building TRT or STS. Hope you found this video helpful. For more insights, please visit www.nst.org insight.